Today is a collab video with DG Bags from the Core 94 radio station in Houston. He interviewed LeVar and it got juicy. He sent it to me. I enjoyed it and I think you'll enjoy it too. Yo, 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 welcome to another episode of the Quarantine Chronicles. I'm your host, DG Bags. And today we have a very special guest. We're talking about the CEO, founder of Big Ball of Bread, the groundbreaking individual. You know the face, you know the name, proud father, Mr. LeVar Ball. Hey, 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 what's going down with you? Man, I'm good, man. I'm alive. We're flourishing during this pandemic and, and, and happy right. to be here. <laughs> hey, that's all, hey, that's all we can say, baby. <laughs> hey, I see you got the three B's on, but we get some we get some new big ball of brand. We get some we get some new merch. Hey, you know we're getting some new merch, some new gear. You know we're doing that, man. But hey, have you seen me without the big ball of brand gear? Come on. When you got your own, boy, that's what you do. You wear your own. <laughs> man, what does ownership mean to you, Mr. Bob? Ownership is one of the biggest things in the world. Like I tell you, whenever you own anything, you you you, you wear that with pride. You do it with pride and, and prosperity, whatever, man. But like I said before, man, you know, like when you have your own bike, your own meal, your own anything, man, that's the key to this thing. And it's like this. I used to always tell my boys, man, some of these guys I used to train, they used to say, man, such and such got a cold ass car. I said, no, that's his mama's car. And he'd be like, his mama got a Lexus. And I say, you got a little uh, Nissan. But check this out. When the mama want that Lexus, he got to give it up. Your Nissan, raggedy, but you can take it anytime you want. Mm, ain't, ain't no schedule. That's what you mean by owning your own thing. You don't have to be the one with the flashy stuff. If it's yours, and I, now you can do what you want with it. Absolutely. That's what ownership is about. That's what ownership is. You know, I want to take it back from the beginning. Did you always have this ownership mentality? Because I know you was, a, how many brothers do you have? I have four brothers and two sisters. Four brothers, two sisters. And I'm the oldest of four right. boys, so I know what it means to be the closest. And I, that's why I feel Lonzo and having to, you know what I'm saying, hold it down right. and, and be the leader and everything. But who did you? who was your mentors? And did you always have that ownership mentality? Well, I, I don't I don't need no mentors. Like I said, I can see mm. things for myself. You know, my mom and dad always been in the workforce. They mom and dad was in the workforce. I looked at athletes and I said, man, we do all the running and jumping and you know, we get these big contracts, but we don't own a thing. So I've always thought like that. I said, man, you got to own something, man. If this dude can pay all the players on the team, what is he making? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He can play all the players on the team. He making so much. It's like, oh, okay. And y'all thinking y'all getting a big crumb, but you don't own nothing. Like I told my boys before, and everybody who's talking about, oh, the boys have left the brand. They'll never lead a brand. They can do some other things, but the big ball of brand is a family brand. When I die, all this stuff go to my boys. I'm not giving it away. And like I said before, with the, with the big ball of brand, that's the only way my boys can get to a billion dollars. You can't get to a billion if you don't own nothing. Mm, and I don't mean to cut, you know, how people be talking about, you know, Jordan and LeBron, they don't own nothing. Kobe died with 600 million. That's a far cry from a billion. And he played the league yeah. 20 years. But imagine <laughs> if he owned that. Imagine yeah. if he owned it. Why, look at the money they make. Man, come on. They like to tell me, you know, about LeBron. LeBron got a billion dollar contract. LeBron, okay. He get a billion dollar contract and yet he makes 16 billion for Nike every year. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you go, oh, he's a billionaire, man. Please. You done made him so much money. You've been in the league 17 years. You know that, man. Hey, the first quarter, they done paid him off for the rest of his life. <laughs> now all that money come to them. That's how it goes down when I keep it real. Mm -hmm. And they don't like what you're doing, LeVar, because you're waking people oh. up. All these athletes like, hold oh, up, man, man, I can have my own signature shoe. I got my I, my Twitter, my Facebook, my Instagram show the people who going to buy my shoes or the, the, the people who went to the high school right. that I went to. They don't like what you're doing, LeVar. This is groundbreaking. Right. <laughs> you, you, you already know. And like I said, I'm on here with you to let them know. They don't want this on ESPN. They don't want this on Fox. That's why, but you get it out because you got your own thing going on. So you're going to keep it real, and this how it goes down with the Quarantine Chronicles, baby. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> True. And you know, you got all three of your boys in the league, and like you said, you had already predicted it. You put the work in from day one, and, and you already knew your boys. I mean, I already, we already know the stories about how you met your lovely wife, Tina, and everything was yes. premeditated. Like, people don't know how to set goals and achieve things and watch them go, especially on the long-term thing. So did you start off 
on doing like little things like as far as like working out like man i'm gonna start i want to lift be able to lift 250 i'm gonna start off i'm gonna get there like what was your process how did you know that you can set goals and my, achieve them my process is to set goals don't dream everybody's trying to say this oh lavar's dreams to come true i don't sit there and dream that means you're sleeping and, you know i'm awake so i can see which way i'm going I'm going to get these goals, and that's what my son's goals was to get to the NBA, and me and my wife's goals was to get them there. And like I said, it, it was a family thing where we went out together, trained together, and, and it was just fun for us. So it was no, like people like to say, you made so many sacrifices. If Anything you do, you got to make a sacrifice, man. But sometimes the sacrifice is good, and sometimes it's bad. I had all good sacrifices. <laughs> so I didn't take my boys to Disneyland. I didn't take them to let them hang out at the movies all night. And then, oh, let's go run and see who the fastest up this hill. Let's see who can make the most shots. Let's see who can do. So they love training. It was not like I had to push them to do something. I love the outdoors. My wife athletic. I'm athletic. Hey, and they very competitive. So we just had fun competing every day, every weekend, going to games for 20 years. We love that stuff. It was a family outing. So how could you say it was a grind and hard work and all that, man? We had a great time. This journey has been great for me and my boys and my wife. You are a man who stands by his word. So anything you say, they should take it as gospel. So when you say he was one of the world's greatest athletes, I believe it. My dad was one of the world's greatest athletes that nobody seen. But I used to watch him at the court right. take drops Two hands dunking on people, Man. people getting upset, shooting. Uh, Steph Curry range my own father, six one. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So I believe it. So like, how like great I said. Athlete. I'll show you how great an athlete I was, man. All the athletes that's great and they kids try to play be raggedy, unless the kid, unless the guy wasn't really that good. Now. I get three boys because I was the world's greatest athlete nobody knew about. So I get three boys, no pressure on saying, oh, you got to be like Shaq's son or you got to be like Kobe or you got to be like LeBron. Son. That's too much for these guys. That's why I told them, usually when you're a superstar, where's Larry Bird's son? Where's Ch Charles Barkley's son? Because them, them dudes is great, great players. and They put all this stuff on these kids. Now, I told my boys, you just born to go pro. But they didn't have to, oh, his dad only scored two points. And I only played two seconds. That's to show you how fast I put them points up. You know, but I was the only one that can play basketball, football, bench press 500 pounds, uh, vertical up to 50 inches, and swim, dive, roller skate, hit baseball, throw baseball 80, 90 miles an hour, and catch football. I did all that stuff, man. And I used to do gymnastics flipping on the ground. That's it. I just love sports and love to play. I can pick up anything. But who cares about that now? The only reason we're talking about that, why? Because big ball of brand, got, I got a brand. So you got to come hear me. It's been around <laughs> since 2016. And they're still talking about the big ball. And like I told them, I may not be first in the race. I may not be last, but I'm in the race. I have my own brand. Got in game. That's why we sitting here. Yeah, I'm the only sucker. To come. Hey, all my boys is everybody, ooh, they got drafted. Ah, yeah, they knew they was going to the league. But hey, I'm the only one, and I'll say again, the only one to ever come into the NBA with his own brand. Absolutely. And you, you know what? That you, it, uh, it, it's kind of like uh, Deontay Wilder before he was just cheating before the little knockout. It's like he uh -huh. did everything to find the odds. They say, oh, you got to box this way, or you got to be built like this, or you can't be this size right. and knock it out. That's exactly what you did with these boys. Like the way Lonzo and Melo and Jello, they play. Like they from the heart of third war, yes. like some projects, the way they deep and great. And then, you know, that's what art they define. Then they like pretty boys. So you would think, oh, these pretty yes. boys are soft. Then they the hardest and the strongest out there. You know what I mean? Then the, the uh, yeah. no black fathers are around. Uh, you defied that one. And then you made the greatest athlete. So everything we ever did was going against the odds. And I'm just so proud of you, man. And it makes me proud. You know what I'm saying? I love Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> And you know, one thing, you're welcome. You're welcome. The one thing I love the most about it too is there's a a, a new thing that like a new trend going on where everybody wants to pretend they are humble and they have a different uh a meaning of what humility is. And I feel like all you're doing is just stating facts. And when you stating facts and, uh, of how you did something totally against the grain, they don't like that because you put a mirror in everybody's faces saying you're doing everything the same and you didn't get no results. I did it my way. You 
You said I was crazy. We was happy. And look what happened. You know what I mean? So hey, I love sure. you, bro. I'm trying to tell you. Hey, here's a narrative they try to say out there. Oh, he does things a little crazy. Don't too many people like him, but I guess they didn't interview you. You <laughs> say very good about me. They don't want to interview you. They don't want to say it on some other networks and say, don't nobody like Lamar. Well, who are you talking to? Who is nobody? Who is everybody? You ain't talking to guys like you who giving them the real. And I told him, I said, people on the street don't come up to me and be like, LeVar, you a total a-hole, man. Everybody that come up to me is real nice and kind to me and they understand what I'm doing. And you know, and they cool. And they show me much love. But then when you hear these other things on these things, oh, they hear a couple of people here and there say some things because they hate and they want to be in my spot. Yeah, it's that's okay, how I As long as I know what I'm about and I know what my family about, we keep on moving, man. It's beautiful generational wealth is something a lot of people can never say, especially in the black community or any any right. minority community. You know what I'm saying? White people struggling out here. You created general wealth. Like yes. you said, another artist you brought him in, Melo, uh, Lonzo, they didn't come into the league looking for a contract for some money that we was already well no. off. Big water brand. We was already doing our thing. So these is right. really ballers. So any team that's getting these boys, it's like getting Kobe Bryant all over again. Remember when he came Man. to the league, he was what nobody working out with nobody like how do you not love the game right. which is why this is what you get with the ball boys man listen hey hey i'll tell you i'll <laughs> tell you something I'll, listen to this i was talking to a guy the other day and he said oh big baller hey your son got a non-guaranteed contract though i said no he got a guaranteed contract he said, what you talking about? They say non-guaranteed. I said, you see, you guarantee him about the money. My son will play for free. He guaranteed to get on that court. That's all we want the guarantee to be. <laughs> guaranteed to get on that court. So that's a guaranteed contract for my boy. Y'all look at it another way. A little money here there. They make so much off the court. Yeah, I'm not worried about the little money on the court. They just want to play against the best players in the world and show people, hey, I get down and I'm the best player in the world. That's what they want the opportunity to be. Zillow's so underrated. I love his game. You know what I'm saying? You know, he remind me of, I don't like to compare nobody, but he remind me of Mitch Richmond. Okay. Oh, yeah. See? But hey, hey, let me tell you this. Hey, stronger and jump higher. Here's the thing with Jello. All the stuff they say Mello and Zoe can't do, oh, they need to get a pro body. They need to get bigger. They need to get stronger. They need to have a better shot. He got all that. Detroit is getting a lottery ticket for free. Who gets that? <laughs> Notoriety, gain, everything. Watch how the sales go up just because you got a ball boy in Detroit. I'm going to take it bigger than that. I'm going to take it bigger than that. Like you say, ownership. Watch how the NBA go up next year. We know it's, they're not going to say it. They're not going to say it because it's some ball boys in the league. Watch. Right. Watch the entire NBA go up in revenue. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's <laughs> must <laughs> TV. Mello right. over there with Mike Jordan. Man, you know Mike Jordan. Yeah. You, see, you see what range he gave to Kimber. Six foot from New right. York. Mello, you going to give him the range in this thing? <laughs> See, you know, you keep it real, man. I know your style. You know what's going down. Man, look, if you like if you like Trey Young, you're going to love Mello. He the same thing, but bigger, faster, more yes. flair. He been playing yes. with Roman. He's like the Ricky Rubio's or the, uh, what's my boy, Luca Dunchy. That's because they was over right. there playing with big boys. Tony Parker, you come over here, it's like it's, it's child's play. Melo and them right. the same, all right? You forgetting that his brothers is Jello as long as my brother's a professional. I practiced with him since I was still right. in high school. Like Austin Rivers came in because he was playing with these, man, these boys are already ready, man. They're going to fly next year. Man, I told you, I can't wait to see ball on all of them. All they got to do is win everywhere they get. The, 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 the GMs, yep. they know what's up. They know what's going to fill them seats. And they got and they got the skills to pay the bills, so it's not no pay right. over. <laughs> it's right. not a uh, right. It's not a, what's the movie with uh, uh Will Ferrell with the with the basket? It's, it's not a it's not a show. It's not the hard <laughs> load. These boys are right. like winning right. and filling in the seats, man. Right? You got a beautiful thing right. going and coming, right. <laughs> man. I'm trying to tell you. And that's why I hope they really get it. Like I said before, man, the last time my boys played together, they was babies and they ran through high school. That's what people don't understand. Now they grown men and they got their size. They will play at a pace so fast. Like I told Jordan, hey, with Mellow, you're good. You get Jello with Mellow, you're going to be better. You get Jello, Mellow, and so you're the biggest ticket in the NBA and they at their best together. You gonna win. Find a way to do that and trust and believe you gonna win championship after championship on the fact that my boys are not gonna be like, give me all the money or I'm gone. They'll stay forever as long as they can play together. 
Mm, mm, and it ain't gonna be about the money or the bag, because this is what they do. What do they tell the brothers in the game at this day, man? You get a super max contract. You know what they call a super max? They want all the people to know that if you're in the league and you get the 200 million, you made it. But yet the team is worth two or three billion dollars. So they want us to keep our heads hitting at that jar where we don't open it up. And so we see the 200 million. It's like that's the most they call it super max because you ain't gonna never make that again in life. Mm -hmm. Unless you sell and doing your own thing and it, it keeps going up. You make a billion one year, now you make two billion the next year, and then three billion, and you keep going up. But they want us to understand, hey, we paid you guys 200 something million, you made it super max, and you want our max to still be in the millions. I ain't trying to hear that. Mm -hmm. But they've been promoting that happened. in the NBA for the longest. Yep. So when a dude get 100 million, you'd be so happy. You get 200, that's your super max. And you barely he, he, two. Oh, he made two ten. He made he making forty million. Yeah, okay. It sounds good. It's good. I get it. But man, when your prize is a little higher, and you figure how these dudes is making billions of dollars a year, and you wondering why your super max what they made that year, they didn't finish paying for you for the rest of your life, and they made that in a quarter. Remember that? Remember that first contract that Matthew got <laughs> that everybody thought? Oh my God! Twenty five years, twenty five million. He signed that big quick as I don't know what. You know, the back then, you're like, he got 25 million? But look at, I mean, you look back, just like uh, the last dance, they told you about the contract, the second best player in the league, Scottie Pippen, and you only getting two million, but he was so happy to get that, uh, that. Man, he didn't know what he was worth. And that's one of the things I want to do, you know, to our race is, is show these kids their self-worth. If you understand your self-worth, you know what you're supposed to be getting. If you don't understand it, man, they give you a little chump change, a little crumbs. You think you didn't did something because you never had nothing. All the talent, where they come from? The hood. Now people tell me, I said, nobody ain't going to ever be able to do the same route that Melo did. Why? First of all, you got to have some money to go overseas. Dudes in the hood, they can't even get to the bus stop. And let alone come over there with a, with a, with a brand and a show. Nobody going to do it. You got to have money to do that. And what do all the time? Where you gonna go? The Beverly Hills or Thousand Oaks or somewhere to get a superstar? You ain't gonna do that. You gotta go to the hood to get that killer. And now my boys is camouflage. What I mean by that, like you said, they're pretty boys, light skinned, don't look like they play hard. They ain't come from South Central LA. Hell, they from Chino Hills. But the mentality that I have is from South Central LA. So that's the mentality they have. I don't have to let them go live down there now. I just tell them about it and, and, and give them a work ethic and say, yo, this is how you roll. So that's why people blood. are shocked. Yes, exactly. You don't get you don't get no superstars like my boys from no dang hills. Anything with hills on it, you ain't gonna get no killers out of there. They'll be on flat land. Yeah. You know, so that's <laughs> yes. just how that thing goes. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, and you know what? Another thing I, I thought about too that I don't think people give your props on too. Now, you know, let's say, let's say you was to get a team in the NBA, you own your team like uh -huh. Michael Jordan. No, you know what I'm saying? Nobody's right. thinking of right. right. their own league, you know, like an ABA, yeah. like what you right. did. Right. Groundbreaking. Hey. Everything hey, hey, you hey. hey, check this out. At one moment, there was two leagues. <laughs> Don't let it come back on them. <laughs> hey, I don't know about that, but don't let it come back on them. Shoot. <laughs> hey, what they don't understand is I already ran my own league. Regardless, of, it was still a pro league. They're showing you I can do it. Yep. Don't let me get yep. that, man. Don't let me just get my mind and be like, you know what? Let me go do this. I'm and create they see what you, what you producing. What you producing, and let, let boys start getting drafted coming from your league. I mean, basically, Melo. Right. Jello. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I already got yep. That's on the resume. Yep. <laughs> it's like, right. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you doing your thing, man. You got to listen, man. You know, it, are we going to have a, a, a big ball of bread, Jordan collab coming, or what's going on? Uh, No. On the fact that, you know, Jordan got his thing going with Nike, man. That's that's cool because you know Nike still own that. The triple B's they all mine. And I feel like leaving, I go. So I don't need to be like I need to collab with these dudes. That was the stuff back in the day. I'm bigger than that now, and I made a shoe by myself because nobody wanted to collab in the beginning. So guess well, what? After I made a shoe and sold it, I don't need them. 
Well, let me ask you this, LaVar. What's the process of somebody that wanted to, because one thing we know about Big Brawler brand, they uh they preach ownership. Just like uh Melo, I think he got the uh, the thing with Puma. He, you can get you another right. deal here. You can wear any shoe you want. So what's the process? Right. So how can somebody reach out to you, an athlete, a football player, or a tennis player, someone well, that's not getting these looks? Hey, like I said, man, they ain't even got to reach out to me. I'm going to reach out to them. Because like I said, I had blinders on for the past few years. Because like I said, Tunnel Vision, I want all my boys in the league. And this is what people was tripping off. They know with the brand. It's a lot of dudes out there that want to rip these triple Bs. So when I go give them the opportunity, they going to run. Now, I'm not looking like this no more. My boys all in the league. Now, I'm like this. Now, I can see everything. Now, now when I approach these number one picks and these football players and these guys, I'm going to offer them a deal that's way better than they ever had which is 40% ownership, they weigh 60% my way. What I mean by that is, if we make you a shoe, and I do all the, the making a shoe for you, we sell a shoe for $100, hey, and we sell it to a million people because you that dude, you get 40 million, I get 60 million. And as your career goes longer and better, we flip it where now it's 60, 40. 40 my way, 60 your way. But you have ownership and you can make 40 mil in one year as opposed to, oh, let me give you 10 million to wear my shoe and endorse it. And you're going to get 2 million for five years, no matter you do good or bad. That's the deals these guys is taking. They're not betting on themselves. When you build yourself, look, look how high it go. Go crazy. Mm. And they so that's how and this they, thing goes. These athletes gonna start making a choice, man. Look at hey, something happened the other day, man. I saw it the other day they had it uh, talking about it, but somebody told me and I looked at it. Uh, Curry, he been in the league for a long time. Now you got, I got the Curry brand. I said, you listening to the big boy? God dang it! Now y'all starting to understand. You ain't preaching uh, Under Armour no more. You said, shoot, let me jump ship right quick while my stuff is hot. Because what happens is they let stuff die down and they're not as hot as they were when they back in the day and they should have made their own brand, their own stuff. That's why you got these guys, some of these guys that play like, your, you know, your John Walls and your, your Anthony Davis. And these guys want these shoe contracts or whatever. And it's like, dude, you have enough money to make your own damn shoe. Forget Nike and all the people trying to endorse you. Forget them. Go make your own damn shoe. And sell that. Call it, call it the brow. <laughs> Shit. You want Nike to sign you to a deal. Here's the thing. They're not going to sign you. You're not a guard. Big man ain't supposed to sell no shoes. That's what they say. But how about you be a big man, make your own damn shoes, and all the big suckers in the world want to buy yours? Like Big Shaq. He ain't thought like <laughs> that. They're not thinking like that. But they like, maybe if I play a little bit better, they're going to give me a my signature shoe, or they're going to give me something. Man, go get your own. You got enough money to make your own. They're not thinking like that. You know, they, they want somebody to come get them. Adidas, please come sponsor me. Nike, please come sponsor me, man. How about the hell with them? Go create your own shoe. Sell it wherever you came from. If you're from Chicago, just sell them Chicago. Everybody want to relate to something that's great. Why do you think people keep wearing Jordans? If Jordan would have, hey, if he would have had pro kids, imagine how much money they do if he would have owned pro kids. He don't own Jump, man. He don't own Nike. He gets a percentage. If he owned it, he would have been the greatest. People say six championships. That's why they wear that shoe. It's the greatest of all time. I can get some Jordans. I guess let him lose and see if you buy them shoes like that. <laughs> They're not doing that. <laughs> Who you your know? top five? So guys, huh? Who, and you say Jordan is the greatest of all time, and I do agree because I'm old enough to remember Jordan in his prime and, and right. young enough to see what's going on right now. Like I love LeBron and everything. That was some that was some real killers that that didn't that didn't stay in the league, like Brandon Roy and Penny Hardaway. I mean, there was some some real uh -huh. some dudes out there. But who's your top right. five? My top five NBA players of all time. All time, the LeVar team. Is that team. what you're talking about? Wait, wait, you, yes, you gotta go, like, like, like I said, you gotta go with Magic is the best point guard ever. Thanks. And then you gotta go, these, these are the ones you know for sure. Shaq it was the strongest sucker ever, so you gotta go with him. Gotta go with Shaq. You gotta go with Mike, because he's the coldest out there. You gotta mm -hmm. go with Mike. And shoot, the other one, LeBron is a specimen, man. That fast and that big. That, them are the top four you gotta go. Now that other one, the fifth one you can put in there just on how you feel that day. You might put in a, a, a Tim Duncan or you might put in a, a, a Kevin Garnett. You you can put in anyone. But them, them four right the there will never be left out. You can put in I a large man, man depending on how you feel. But it's, it's some guys. Now, see, if my guy wasn't going crazy, 
uh, talking like an idiot, Charles Barkley, he would have been my fifth guy of all time. Because that boy used to play hard. I used to love his style. Reckless, light skin, heavy duty like me, and doing his thing. But then he got old and start talking like a nut. So now I don't deal with him. So now you never can get on the big baller's dream list no more. Because like I said, you can even put a shooter out there. You can put Curry or, or a Larry Bird. Some guys all this or stuff, you can have a shooter out there. Or you can have a, a pure athlete, like I told people before. I don't deal with the old guys, but that guy dang Oscar Robinson, man, that dude can do a little bit of everything. Ain't good size on him, but just too old in their air. But he averaged triple double. Come on, man. Who don't want that dude on his team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first you know, James Harden. So, so, so I <laughs> said, the mother four that I, that I put out there is just like you can flip. You can either put uh, you know Kobe or Olajuwon in there, depending on what you want to do. It'd be powerful. Or Kobe, Olajuwon, or, or or Tim Duncan, or Kevin Garnett. Them dudes right there. You can you can fill that four spot in there like they're kind of easy. And if you sometimes if you really want to go crazy, you put Dennis Rodman on there because he's gonna get you every rebound that's loose. You, you know what I'm saying? These, these pieces of strong go uh, The strongest ever. You, you, ain't nobody seen nobody with the strength of Shaq. That fast and that strong. And ain't nobody seen nobody like LeBron. And they say, well, why is LeBron so good after 17, 16 years? Man, because he came in here swole. He was big and strong, so he's very durable. He didn't come in like Kobe and KD and everybody's so skinny. That's why you can't weigh him down. You hope something pulled on his ass. But that dude's always been strong. So what, what did he do? He ain't in there pounding. He playing a point guard spot because he can. And that's a big ass guard. He just running down the lane. You can't stop him. And then, like I said, with Jordan, the mentality of winning, ain't nobody gonna match that. They tried. Everybody coming up short, except for my boys. Watch what happened. And like I said, the Magic Johnson. Come on, nobody ever played point guard better than that boy. So those are what I'm yeah. saying. People know that. It's just on how you feel that four of them. But them four that I mentioned, you can't you can't have an all time team without them. Facts, facts, all facts. Now we saw an episode with Nate Robinson at, at the house, man, at your, at your mansion, man. You know what I'm saying? And that mantle that you said you're gonna fill in with the space with all three of your boys in the league, man. When is that yeah. getting done? I don't know, but it's getting done. Trust and believe that. They all gonna be on the same team. That's what I'm gonna paint that in there. Mm. On the same team. I'm leaving that thing open until that happens. Come on, Mike yeah. Jordan. Let's go on yes. and do it. I'm trying to tell him. He couldn't set it up any better. If it was a movie, it couldn't be set up any better. You got Jordan, right. you got Big Baller, you got all the brothers, you got nothing but winners. Man, come I'm on, trying to tell you. Let's make it happen, baby. Let's make it happen. <laughs> I nah, told him it's going down. <laughs> it's, hey, this 21 season, hey, man, it's going down. Watch the NBA is on fire. The video games with all the balls on there? Bro, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, listen, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yo, Mr. Ball, before we get out of here, can you tell everybody where they can find you, where they can get your big ball of bread, anything that you got hey, going on right yeah. now? Let me, let me tell them, hey, man, you can find me everywhere because I'm all over the place. But anyways, go to Big Ball of Brand, Inc., Com. And that's where you can get all my merch. All my new stuff is coming out, man. And like I said, we're coming back bigger and better. We're going to have some cold things. But I got something to tell somebody. Everybody rolling with four wheels. But for you motorcycle guys, I got a special treat for you. The motorcycle jackets and motorcycle gloves coming out big baller style. Watch it. They're going to be cold. They ain't seen me in this lane. I know Mike like to ride them motorbikes. I'm about to get in that lane with the motor gear. Check it out. <laughs> uh, just like that wrapping up another episode of Quarantine Chronicles I'm your host DG Bags you can find me on Instagram at DG Bags that's at DG B-A-G-G-S or at the Core 94 and make sure you tune in to the Core94.com we give you the hottest music the hottest content and the hottest interviews period thank my guest Mr. LaVar Ball the groundbreaking most polarizing figure in the game <laughs> boy I like your style boy you a cold piece of work baby keep doing your thing, man. Quarantine Chronicles, I'm coming to call at you, baby. <laughs> <laughs>